An inventory checks all the items in your collection against a list of holdings in your Atrium database to identify missing items. Before beginning inventory, we suggest that you run reports to identify missing, circulated, or overdue items. Update the item status of any lost or damaged items. If outdated items have been removed from your collection, remove those records from your database as well. Then, choose the type of inventory that suits you best. To perform an inventory in Atrium, you must Access the inventory form You may access the inventory forms if you have permission to do an inventory. Create an inventory Atrium allows you to have more than one active inventory at a time. Process the holdings barcodes associated with the inventory you created. And finalize the inventory marking lost any items for which the holdings barcode was not seen during the inventory process. We will discuss each of these topics in detail. To access the inventory form, you can click the Inventory button on the Library and Desktop toolbar, which has been customized for this demonstration and placed at the beginning of the toolbar. Or, in the menu, click Catalog, and then select Inventory, and two or three inventory forms will display on the inventory screen, and two are shown here. The Create Inventory form contains a Start New Inventory dialog field, where you can type a unique name for each active inventory you want to start. The Active Inventories form lists the name of each active inventory that has been started, but has not yet been finalized. Additional information about each active inventory includes the name of the worker that created the inventory and the last activity. Finally, an action column lets you continue or delete each active inventory. If you do not currently have any active inventories, the following message displays in orange text, No Active Inventories Defined. The Finalized Inventories form only appears when any inventories have been finalized and have been retained. The name of each finalized inventory is followed by the name of the worker that created the inventory and the last activity related to the inventory. Finally, an action column at the right lets you continue or delete each finalized inventory. Now that you are familiar with the inventory forms, let's click the Home button on the Library and Desktop toolbar to return to the Atrium Home page so that we can begin the inventory process from the very beginning. To create an inventory, click Catalog in the menu and select Inventory from the list, and the inventory form opens. In the Create Inventory form, type a unique name of the inventory. Long names allow you to be quite definitive in naming each inventory. I will enter inventory underscore 2011 underscore zero hundreds in the dialog field. This naming pattern aids in sorting purposes and for clarity when looking at the file name. Inventory underscore 2011 represents your inventory for the year 2011. And zero hundreds is for items classified in the zero hundreds Dewey Decimal Classification. Click Create at the end of the dialog field. The Report Wizard displays an atrium. Decide whether you will do a full or partial inventory of items in the library. This will allow you to generate a list of the items you'll be checking item barcodes against. For a full inventory, click Generate List. All items in the library will be queued for a complete inventory of all the holdings in the library. For a partial inventory, build a filter for the portion that you want to inventory and click Generate List to queue the inventory list. Since we have decided to do a partial inventory, and we named this one zero hundreds, we need to create a filter that queues all the items in the zero hundreds section. In the field for call number, click the pull down list in the qualifier field and select begins with. And in the last field, enter a zero. This will retrieve or queue all items with a call number that begins with zero. Click the generate list button. The active inventory screen appears. The dynamic tools for the inventory process are contained on this screen. I will acquaint you with each of them by pointing them out and discussing what each button and link does for you. Let's discuss how you can interact with the active inventory screen and observe the dynamic information, action links, buttons, statistics, and reports that it provides. Starting at the top of the active inventory screen, you see links to actions in the actions area of the screen. 
Actions related to the inventory process are links in blue text identified by name. Click any link to display the respective information or action in the Actions area of the Active Inventory screen. Click File Update to open a form to update inventory from file by which you can update the active inventory. It is currently the screen we are on, so the screen did not change when I clicked the link. Type the path or use the Browse button to locate the appropriate file of the Holdings barcodes for this inventory and click Update Inventory to process the text file. If you have chosen to do a partial inventory, you may only need to process one file for the inventory. However, if you are doing a complete inventory, you may have many files to update the complete inventory. Using text files has an advantage over other methods of doing inventory. Should anything go wrong with your computer, the network, or internet access, you can reprocess the saved file without having to capture the holdings barcodes again. Clicking Mark Items opens a form. Mark Items is seen with a dialog field into which you can type or scan holding barcodes to update the active inventory item by item directly into Atrium. Each holding submitted in the field is immediately processed. Messages appear as necessary. For example, should you inadvertently process the same barcode more than once, a message, an audible sound alert, indicates that the holding or item has already been marked as seen. As you process items, the key displays and statistics are dynamically increased or decreased. You may clear the list of materials entered through the Mark Items dialog field. Statistical counts will not be changed by clearing the list. The Mark Items dialog field provides the perfect interface when you are entering the holdings barcodes of stray items that are found after the primary text files have been processed for inventory. However, it is also acceptable to use this method of direct input for the entire inventory process. Clicking Bulk Mark Items opens an Action Dialog Mark Items as Seen form for bulk updating on the Active Inventory screen. Use it for queuing a list of holding barcodes that can be processed as a batch, queue items by typing numbers followed by the Enter key, or scan barcodes into the queue, one barcode number per line. When you have queued all the holding barcodes, click End of Batch to process the queued numbers. The Mark Items as Seen Bulk queue will be empty after the inventory is updated and all holdings barcodes are processed. Notice the message in red stating that one has already been marked as seen. The stats counters are also updated and the materials entered are displayed. Error messages appear as they apply. Clicking Action Update provides a form with three buttons for updating circulated items, which are items currently on loan by declaring them Seen, Unseen, or Lost. The Set Seen button sets any circulated items as seen for this inventory, and it does not check in circulated items. By clicking Set Seen, you are relying on the circulation records as an audit trail on circulating items, since you do anticipate them to return. Therefore, they are accepted as seen for purposes of this inventory. Set Unseen sets any circulated items as unseen for this inventory. Therefore, Atrium will check in the circulated items to the borrower, mark them lost, and assess the cost of the item to the borrower. Do not use Set Unseen if you do not want the items checked in and marked lost. Additionally, do not use Set Unseen unless you have appropriate cost associated with all your materials. Otherwise, the cost of the item assessed to the borrower will be zero. Clicking the Reports link provides access to a battery of reports so you can inspect and evaluate the progress in the inventory process. You may look at or edit any of the five different lists that have data in them, which is indicated by the numeric value between the parentheses. Let's click on the Show Lost Inventory Items, and the report window opens. Items with a status of lost are listed in red. Let's close the window. 
Finally, dynamic statistics concerning the inventory are shown on the stats line. Seen is the number of items that are currently accounted for during the inventory process. Unseen is the number of items that are queued for this inventory and remain to be entered into the active inventory. Lost is the number of items in this inventory that have been declared lost before the inventory was started or they have been declared lost by the set lost action described earlier. Total is the number of items queued for this inventory. Items that have been set as seen will increase the counter while the unseen counter will be decreased. The number of lost items will appear in the loss tabulation. Use the stats for a quick decision about the progress of an inventory. When the number unseen approaches zero, you are nearing completion of the inventory. Use the reports to see supporting data for any facet of the inventory process for which you want details.